Hey, welcome to Inside Integration. My name is Chris. I'm joined as always by my partner, Jason. What's up, everybody? And today we are talking to Scott Foco, the Director of Sales for Sonance. Hey, guys. How are we doing? Hey, Scott. Welcome, uh, welcome to Inside Integration, man. We're, uh, we're super, super happy to have you here. We... Uh, been been waiting to get you on you were technically you're the you were the first guest when we really started doing podcasts and honestly um the podcasting was kind of your idea so we're we're gonna we, we wanted to get you on for this uh, is actually all your fault Scott. This <laughs> yeah, actually exactly. we invited you on here really just to blame you for, for yeah, the last 19 you. or 20 episodes yes uh, uh, well, 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 apologizing to everybody for <laughs> <laughs> all that you've been enduring. Yeah, no, I, I do. Uh, I, I remember doing the first one, and it did feel a little bit like it was beta mode. So I feel like I'm here, ready for the real deal, and I can uh, hopefully make up for all of the horrible things I said last time. So it's it's uh, it's very much that. still beta mode, and uh, you know this this really is just to kind of direct all the blame uh, that our viewers have uh, to you for for starting this <laughs> off. So why, where did you get? Who gave you the idea to do this? Foco, <laughs> get your torch and your pitchfork and head over <laughs> to Oregon. We're uh, we're, we're selling them. They're, they're branded. They're inside integration branded torches and pitchforks. So you can pick those up and help support the show. Check, and uh, yeah, check yeah. those on our website. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you know, um, we're super happy to have you back. We're, we're glad you're here. New format and everything, and um, you know, always always an awesome guy to talk to, whether you know live on a webcast or or you know just in general. You know, call you up in the middle of the night and we'll just talk. Um, there it is. He'll be up. But, uh, <laughs> Really, I, I kind of want to introduce you, I, I guess, to our audience here a little bit. Um, you know, you're you're with Sonance, you're the director of sales. Um, you know, anybody who's a Sonance dealer probably knows you. You're, you know, you do a lot of travel, you speak to a lot of guys. Um, how did you get into custom integration and like this industry in particular? Yeah, it was. There's a little bit of a, a wandering journey, I suppose. I, to, to give you guys a cliff note version, um, like a lot of folks in the industry, I started out in car stereo uh, back in high school days, trying to figure out how to make an '88 Toyota Corolla hatchback a little more interesting. Which uh, my only method was a couple of subwoofers and start cutting holes in the wall. Twelve inch subwoofers are way more interesting. Than <laughs> totally, no, right? no subwoofers for sure. Uh, yeah. So after car stereo days, I mean, you, you do that for enough years and you start to realize that the, the real estate that you have to work in, you know, the, the footwell of a hatchback is pretty tight. Uh, you start looking for other opportunities. So I, I will say that I, I give a lot of thanks and gratitude for the years I spent in car audio because I think that that's, a, that's an industry where you have to know a little bit about electrical theory. You have to learn about how to use different tools, whether it's working on wood or in metal. You're, you're learning about impedance and resistance and current and... Um, there was a lot of kind of base level education that I took out of that space that I was able to carry into to future stuff. So um, car audio was definitely the genesis of the interest into the audio world. Um, you know, like I said, when, once you get tired of crawling up in the, the footwell of a car, you start thinking <laughs> what else is out there. So, um, so somehow insulation and crawl spaces are an upgrade from the inside of the car. So that was a couple of years just being the the guy, you know, the gopher under the house or the guy up sweating in the in the, in the attic space. Um, that eventually grew into being one of the better guys, like at least on, on our team internally, figuring out how to, to get the install work done. And so, um, you know, at, at some point I made a transition to work for the manufacturing side. So originally working for a distributor in the Pacific Northwest, and then you start getting to know more people from the, from the manufacturers and it developed to some relationships. And um, after being a rep for uh, for the Oliver marketing team, as it were, for a number of years, small work. Uh, I'd net. Crossed over yeah, to the to the real dark side, which is going to work for a manufacturer. So instead of having, you know, 20, 30 different brands to have to be educated and aligned on, and you know, constantly in learning mode, being able to settle into one manufacturer and, and really understand our product, our our team at a, a very deep level. Um, that's. Uh, that's sort of the cliff note version. There's certainly more wandering <laughs> roads in there to tell. There were some stops as a as a youth pastor. There was a stop as a FedEx delivery truck driver. So I, I can't say it was a straight path to where I am today, but it's been interesting, that's for sure. Well, it's, it's definitely it's funny too. How many how many guys who are in CI kind of share that same genesis, right? Like you know, I, I got too big for the for the wheel well, right? Like that's that's definitely a thing. You know, my, my back hurt too much or whatever. Um, it, it seems that the improvisational skills 
sorry, um, that you pick up in, in car really does translate to CI, right? Like get it done. How do you do it? What do you have to expect? And, and, and just be yeah. able to kind of roll with punches. I know. scratch something. How do I hide this? <laughs> right. the client doesn't see it. How do I fix <laughs> what, how do I fix this? I mean, I'm not speaking from personal experience, of course. I'm right. Not, but, no. uh, that's, that's a handful of dirt and you just rub it on the outside. Just, and oh, and you get a crayon and a little heat gun uh, and there you go. whip it all right up back to perfect. Look at that. Right. Yeah, and, and so our next podcast will be install tips and tricks from the, uh, the underworld. <laughs> what what not to do? And yeah. use a walnut to clean up where your feeler bit gouged the floor. Not that that's ever happened, or that the statute of limitations is still in effect for that. Yeah. But you know, um, but yeah, I mean that's that, that's that's quite a journey. Um, you know, so now you're sales director at Sonance. Like, what does your week look like? I know you do a lot of travel. I know you talk to a lot of dealers. Like, what is your, you know, what do you do? What do yeah, you do all day? My job kind of has two different paradigms. I think like a week like this one, I'm I'm home this week. There's no travel, so I'm I'm cooped up in the office. Um, you know, I think like like many of us out there, there's proactive and then there's reactive sides to the business. So I, I think we'd all like to be proactive more often than not, where we're we're looking for opportunities, we're we're doing some analysis on the market, where the gaps are. I'm you know looking at individual dealers, saying, hey, I don't think I've had a chance to show these guys these products, and I think they're missing the boat on them. So there's there's that proactive side of how do I grow, um, and then there's the reactive side, which I think we all spend probably a majority of our time living in that space, unfortunately, where it's, it's reacting to what's coming in. So it's uh, it's it's calls, it's emails from dealers asking questions. Can I use invisible in this surface material? What's the right product for this? Hey, I saw this gr glass railing system with some speakers hidden into it. How did you do that? Can you show me? Um, can we set up a AIA conference? I've got some stuff going on with in integrators or uh, architects, designers. So a lot of that is just reactive to what's coming in. Sure. So that's it. when I'm home. It's it's a little bit of both of those things, and then when I'm when I'm on the road, which is usually eight to ten days a month, um, that's really the fun part. That's getting out into the market. That's walking job sites from time to time. That's sitting face to face with integrators, having similar conversations about where's your business at today. You know, what's your targets for growth? How can Sonance be a part of that? Is there ways that we can help you unlock a different category or find a different way to convince a, a client to spend more money with you? Um, how do we help provide and prove value to what we're doing as a as an industry? So, um, being on the road is, is certainly enjoyable. I get my best meals when I'm out on the road. I'm a cheap date when I'm at home, but uh, on the road, those of you who are with me know that uh, that the meals tend to go pretty well. And there's always dessert when I'm traveling. So I thought I was going to say, don't you have dessert when for dinner when you're traveling? It's not usually That's, one of the rules. From a, yeah, on occasion, the main course will start with, "Hey, can I get the uh, you know the, the peanut butter turtle sundae?" Ooh. And then we'll talk about food afterwards. Does that come with marinara sauce? Or? Hopefully not. I just sorry, I had to go to the uh, I had to think of like the mozzarella cheese sticks. Like that's, you know, that's that's usually kind of my my go-to uh, appetizer. So there's a, here's a message for for any dealers out there that might be interested in in Sonance. Uh, Scott's a great guy to have come out and have a little visit with. Might be good for a, a tasty lunch or something along the way too. So not that you need to pump, not that you need to pump us for a free lunch, but if you're serious. Uh, Scott's a good guy to sit down with, right? Uh, yeah. I think you know it comes down to being more about being approachable and being down to earth. And but you know, this is not heart surgery. You know, nobody dies uh, on the operating table of of audio video. So it, it's nice to have people that you can you know relate to and build that relationship with, build yeah, that bond. Sure. With. Well, and that's and I think that's something worth worth bringing up is that you know when you when you talk to Scott and you meet with Scott, it's not it's not about selling. You know, just as a philosophy. You know, in general it's not about selling the specs. It's not about our speakers are louder or are they installed differently or anything else. It's more, it, it's certainly more of a conversation about, you know, the business and, and different ways to, you know, to kind of sell and, you know, how to sell the performance and what the, you know, ways to help your business move forward. It's not just move more of our boxes. Otherwise there's no more free lunches. It's, it's more like, Hey, I want to, you know, I want to partner with you. And that, that's kind of an extension of, of what Sonance's philosophy is, right? It's that authentic partnership where, um, you know, we're here to help you find different ways to sell and sell our products in better ways, not just more numbers, not just, you know, in more places, but in a, in a holistic kind of way. Um, you know, and we've, Jason and I have done a lot of shows on Sonance, on Sonance's studio. And, you know, it seems like, um, you know, 
we're we're big fans. We're you probably count us as fanboys to be honest. Um, but that's that's a huge aspect of Sony Ants and and you know of um, you know what you what you discuss in general. You know when you when you meet with a guy. Um, you know what's like what's an overview of that? How does you know how does that translate? Because it's, it may not be yeah. the most natural thing for a dealer to go from selling specs to selling lifestyle and and ethos yeah i think uh you know so much of what we do as, as an industry is relationship driven and I'd, I'd like to think that for a lot of our integrators the way they work with their clients it, it becomes relationship driven as well i mean it's 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 not often that an integrator is doing a one and done kind of job typically when you when you're an integrator and, and you can do a good job with a customer they're your customer for life you know at least for the the life of the home right and that's that's the goal is to make sure that i'm not just selling you one job to take as much money as i can out of your pocket and then hit the road um, that's that's what i think has turned a lot of end users customers off over the years is, is having negative experiences like that so sure. um you know, the way that we tend to approach business is, is a lot more about relationships. Um, if, if you're just buying boxes from us, we're, we're not a special company. If that's the case, we're just a, a vendor supplying goods and we'll trade you some dollars for some speakers and we move on. And so our goal is to, to know our, our customers. Well, we want to understand where you struggle, you know, what your passions are. We want to know why you do what you do, not just what you do and what you need to make it work, but we want to understand the reasons why you got here and, and you know, a little bit of your origin story. And, you know, if you're struggling in ways, if that's, Hey, we're, we're having a hard time with staffing or, Hey, we can't figure out a good ERP system or a point of sale system. You know, typically a company that's just moving speakers is going to say, well, ho hope that works out for you. Good luck. Let me know when you need to buy some more, but <laughs> I think figure that out, <laughs> you know, we, we jump in and say, well, how can we help you? Let me, let me put you in touch with another dealer that, you're not competing with that they might have some some experience that could help you with that or you know let me connect a few dots or this has worked for us in the past let me share some of that wisdom um, not to say that we get it right all the time we we make plenty of of mistakes we fall on their face often but um, if we can show up and be authentic and just say hey we we want to help each other grow whatever that looks like whatever type of business that looks like uh, that's you know that that's really the approach to sony it's a it's, it's a much more relationship driven business than any other company that i've been a part of um, you know sales sales are part of it right like to, i look at that as it's one output that we're looking at but it's also a lot of other things it's how do you enjoy doing business with us is it easy to work with sonians are we providing additional value that you're not getting from other places you know it's really our goal at sonians to wake up every day and earn our customers business that's the mindset we don't assume that anything is given and and, and just expected but we got to wake up every day and earn the right to be your partner. So that's a little bit of, of kind of the approach, the, the way that we tend to sit in and walk into meetings. And whether you're new or you've been with us for 20 years, you're going to get the same kind of presentation about it. There's no dog and pony. It's like, let's just let's be real with each other. Let's find ways to help each other out. Yeah, and, and that's I mean, it, it's great because it is pretty unique. And and that's a uh, that's a huge strong point with, with Sony. It's obviously your gear is great, right? Like the speakers are awesome. The James stuff is fantastic. The electronics work very well. Installer focused, revolutionary technology, all that sort of thing. But it, it's it's almost it's funny because you guys almost treat it as something that's secondary, right? So there's this this great um, there's this great philosophy behind what Sonance does it translates into you know the studio and the studio experience it translates into all of you know all the sales team and all of your guys who are kind of out there in the field and and um it really is you know indicative of just everybody rowing in the same direction which is kind of amazing you know especially with all the manufacturers that we deal with and we're not besmirching anybody but the fact that we you only guys, deal with the best manufacturers it, chris well our, our <laughs> portfolio of excellence will will attest to that but they That's uh, true. you know it's um it's 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 nice you know everybody again swimming in the same direction it's the same you know it's the same thing um and everybody's aligned towards the same goal and that's uh that's really really rare and that's that's kind of again that's another thing that you guys preach right is you know if you if you come down and take the studio tour um there's a pretty decent portion of it with Ari talking to everybody about a book called uh, the four dysfunctions of a team and that's sort of the central message of of the book is making sure that your whole team is is aligned that your goals are all set and everybody's sort of working in the same direction um it's it's kind of amazing to me that that book had enough of an impact on on you guys and, and ari and sonance and as a whole that 
you really make that a big part of your thing. Like what manufacturer is, you know, talking about business books, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, for one, don't sell us short. There are five dysfunctions. I'm sorry. Say hey, you, you yeah. skipped one. I, I can't read. <laughs> if there was only four, it would be easy, right? Yeah, it would be much uh, easier. Yeah. And for, for those that maybe don't know the, the name Ari, uh, Ari Supran is our CEO at Sony Ants. Um, he's been on the team for 15, almost 20 years now. And, you know, I, when I first joined the team, I looked at uh, Jason Sloan, who's our chief sales officer. And it, it, to me, Jason does a lot of the running day to day and, and headline, um, uh, you know, kind of kind of looking over the top line sales and, and keeping direction there. Ari spends a lot of time focused on culture and team and, and really establishing the why behind what we do. And, you know, to your point, Chris, if you came to the studio for a, a two day visit with us, um, it, it, you get a lot of time with the team, di different uh, product guys, different people in marketing. We try to expose you to a lot of different folks on our team, but um, Ari jumps in and spends, you know, good 90 minutes, almost two hours with everybody, just talking a little bit about culture um, and, and some of the team dynamics. And it's uh, oftentimes as much as, you know, dealers leave that two day tour and you get to bring back stories about invisible speakers or, you know, crazy theater demo or the breadth of outdoor products. A lot of times the, the folks that when they go home, when they look back and say, what was the most impactful thing for me? It's usually the story is, Hey, that time that we got with Ari to talk about culture and about the way team works together and, and how we get aligned on things. That's usually the most important thing that people take home with them. And I think that's, uh, a, a very good analogy of how we are at Sony. It's yes, the products 100% have to perform. They've got to be easy to use. They've got to be reliable. All of that is true. Um, but product almost takes a backseat to the stories that we tell, the strategies, the the business that we, um, the, the, the way to approach business. All of that, I think, is more at the forefront of what we do. We wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have the products to go along with them. But I think we really try to focus more on why you'd want to do work with us and, and how we can help each other grow and be better in the long run. Um, the product has come, uh, come along as part of that deal. Yeah. The experiential marketing aspect of it. And I, I've looked it up. Experiential apparently is not actually a real word. It is now, baby. <laughs> but, it is now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think the, you know, the experience, you know, outside of what, um, what you guys are doing there in, in San Clemente, uh, but the, the experience with Sonance, I think, you know, just kind of breeds what, what we're talking about here, that like-mindedness and that, Hey, let me, let me, can, you know, let me take what I've, I've learned here or, you know, the, the vibes are, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the essence, if you will, of what Sonyans has to offer and, and figure out how I can spin that and deliver it to my, to my, yeah. you know, to my end users and my customers. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, comes to mind and, you know, this is a shameless plug for, for the design gallery, but mm -hmm. um, capturing, all of the the things that we've sort of talked about and been kicking around and expressing that uh, through an application is kind of a mind boggling feat, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, it, like, I'm, I'm trying to think of like how to ask this question the right way, but when, when you look at a tool like the design gallery, like I think that, and at least for, I'm just gonna make an observation here. Maybe it's not even a question, but I think that really is an expression of what Sonance is all about. I mean, would you agree? Like when you talk about the lifestyle shots and you talk about none of this is really about product, it's really more about the experience, right? Yeah, 100%, yeah. And that's, I think that, you know, for those that haven't seen or you don't know what we're talking about the Design Gallery app, this is Sonance Design Gallery. It's available on iPad, iOS devices. Uh, if you don't have one of those, you can jump into SonusDesignGallery.com just to get an idea uh, and kind of. Dude, you got all the plugs down hard. I love there it. it is. You're, you're on it. Like it's on on uh, you know smash the notification. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's like and describe. Uh, yeah. That's where to find it. But yeah, I mean the 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 tool is built out. You know, I remember going through and 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 teaching dealers. You know, spend an hour going through all these different pieces of how to use it, when to when when to bring it out of the bag, when to leave it in the bag. But you can go through a whole presentation and, and walk through just about every slide on the entire thing and go, hey, by the way, do you have any idea what brand I have shown you this entire time? Like, we don't plug our own brand name. There's no, like, there's no Sonance badging, James logos. We don't talk about model numbers or price tags. Like, it's it's about how a customer would experience these things. It's, it's about the emotional connection to their project, which is something that I, I say this all the time, but as an industry, we are so bad about tying emotion to what we do because we are a whole bunch of nerds that are really into the technology 
that we think is cool, but our customers don't understand what's the big deal about a, you know, a, a video matrix over IP. Like, it doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is that when they want to bring family and friends over and put a ball game on and they can, you know, tile a display and have multiple things running at the same time, like, that's the experience that we're trying to create. Being able to have music blanket your room so that you don't ever know there's music pointing at you, but it just wraps around you and it gives you this wonderful experience. That's what we're trying to do as an industry, but we, we get lost in that so much because we're into the technology. So what the Design Gallery app does is it lets you get away from the technology. It even helps you stop being a salesperson and it just starts painting pictures of experiences and asking the question to your customer, is this something you care about? Would you like this in your life? And how can we help provide that for you in a better way? Um, I think that's that's the biggest power of that tool. It's not about selling a product. It's about helping somebody connect emotionally to their project and help them understand why they would want to spend their money on something like that. Yeah, it's a great bolster to your sales message. So if you've, you've got an idea in mind for your client, you're like outdoor audio system, for example, and you're like, client goes, what do you mean? You want to put 24 speakers and four <laughs> subwoofers in my backyard? You're, you're crazy. Right. And then you're like, oh, you know, my, my neighbors will hate me. And you're like, no, this is a way to get your neighbors a over to your house if you want them there. <laughs> but, but B again, really to, you know, we talk about it all the time, but, but spread the, spread the coverage around. I literally just did a demo last week for a client uh, out in the Mercer Island area. And the, uh, you know, the, the husband and wife, they're concerned about, Hey, like, is this going to be too loud? Is this going to carry? I'm like, the whole idea here is so that you can have speakers on by the barbecue and people, you know, speakers on over at the seating area where everybody can have a conversation and nobody's getting drowned out by the speakers on the side of the house. They had the, you know, they had the $6 million house with the, with the $250 plastic speaker uh, <laughs> scenario that, that we were, that we're, we're so fond of uh, making examples of how, right. uh, how this could be better um, to put it politely. So, um, you know, I guess that's a very long segue to mention to everybody out uh, there that's listening to this. Uh, if you're a Sonance dealer in the Pacific Northwest and you'd like to do a similar demo for your clients in their space or in their backyard, Sonance has kits and uh, I'm part of your program, as, as we're fond of saying, <laughs> uh, could show up and make some of that happen for you. I mean, how many vendors do you know of uh, that offer that kind of experience. Yeah. So, so my Sonance demo story uh, comes from very recently on on Friday. A uh, good good friend of mine who's an integrator here in Southern California, where I'm based, uh, had a outdoor kit, and we uh, I'm, I'm part of uh, something with the YMCA where my son and I go camping every month with a whole ton of people, and we uh, mm -hmm. we had an event um, this weekend where we camped out and we were showing a movie and we needed to get sound for that movie. So this, you know, this local integrator was, was nice enough to bring along the entire Sonance outdoor demo kit. And, uh, we, we rigged it up and basically, um, instead of, you know, camping questions and movie questions, I was answering questions about what is this system and why does it sound so good? And like literally walking, walking other dads through the whole demo and saying okay it's you know it's these little little tiny speakers and then you bury this thing you know right up to its neck and it sounds amazing and it's so that you can you know you can fill your whole yard with sound and everything else and um it it was great and it's just living yeah. proof you know doing the demo you're selling those in the wrong market chris you don't live in southern California. hey listen i uh i will never um you know that if any way i can help uh our buddies at mta for sure yeah uh, no but the guys at morris tater are our friends of the show for sure but no it was you know we, we needed sound and uh it was it was awesome it worked out great and yeah if we turned a lot of new people onto you know inadvertently turned a lot of new people onto the uh the outdoor system and it's yeah. It's wild, you know, if you've never, you know, this is, this kind of goes to talking about the experience, right? Like we're in CI, we know that there are a number of different flavors of what's essentially the same thing, right? Small satellites, buried subwoofers, you know, amplification and everything else, right? Obviously Sonance does that the best, but you know, it, for us, it's, it's, it's nothing for somebody who may not know if you're selling the experience of these are all hidden. You're not going to see them and it's going to sound amazing. And it's going to be even constant coverage throughout your entire space. That's revolutionary. And like literally going from person to person on Friday night, people's minds were blown. Like, I didn't even know that something like that existed. I thought it needed to be a couple of surface mounts on the, on the eve of my deck and whatever. And you know, it's, it just shows I, the last thing I expected was to go into salesman mode at this, 
at this camp out covered in dirt and uh you know like swatting bugs uh but it was yeah it was it was great and it just cool. it's a testament to the experience you know yeah yeah so many folks just they they assume that uh it, it's only as good as what they've figured out and so you you go into some people's homes and you do one of these demos which setup takes what like 15 minutes to deploy a whole demo kit i, I can attest to that it was uh 21 and a half minutes from backing up the toyota to the to the gate and uh we were listening to fleetwood mac so yeah pretty pretty short window. 21 minutes for setup and about 21 seconds to have a customer go yep that's, that's what that's I, what i want right there right? Awesome. But the, the funny thing is the uh, so many people like uh an amazon alexa dragged from their kitchen plugged in next to the barbecue becomes the best thing they've ever listened to and you can't fault them for it. like we no. want to make fun of them because we know better but so many folks out there just don't they just don't even they don't know they, they have no they've never experienced anything, anything like that before and so much of that is just hey how do i take the time to go provide an experience for my customer let him let him check it out and let him make a choice yeah so we've been talking about outdoor here so let's talk a little bit about business because scott uh is, is definitely he's hiding his shark fin right now he's got a he's he's a pretty he's a pretty solid pretty shrewd individual uh, when you think about the when you think about the audio business in general, right? Where do you see uh, from from your side as a sales director, but also your view on the industry, the biggest opportunities uh, for dealers out there to to grow with audio or to to you know if if you can only do so many houses a year, sure. how can you shift your mix of your offerings to maximize uh, the, those returns uh, on yeah. you know on those opportunities? I think there there may have been a little bit of a lead to that question there, uh, just with the outdoor bucket, because you know where what? I, you know, what? Been, really. um, I'll, I'll kind of point you at two different things. I think one of them is just if you're an integrator that has been used to selling traditional six and a half inch or eight inch speakers and ceilings, and that that you know you, you get a pair of them in every room of the house, and you're doing that rinse and repeat, a couple of different jobs a week. Um, th thank you for one for being a part of the business. Like that's that's meat and potatoes for us, 100. percent But I think to your point, Jason. You know, if you're an integrator that's saying, all right, I can only do so many jobs per year before I have to start adding additional technicians, which also means more trucks, more product, a little bit tighter cash flow. Um, you know, how, how do I do more with less? Being able to take some of those rooms and, and start learning how to have more design centric conversations and get yourself away from being a salesperson and start becoming more of a designer that will help you get into the world of invisible speakers and small aperture product where you're still providing audio solutions in those spaces, but you're doing it with higher margin dollars available as well as higher price tags. And so it's a way to put a little bit more uh, in your pocket each time by doing the same amount of installation work, the same amount of amp channels, things like that. I would also add that it's not just about being a salesperson and, and putting more dollars in your pocket, but typically when a customer says yes to invisible, says yes to small aperture, their level of satisfaction is actually higher. They are happier that they spent the additional dollars at the end of the day because their results in that space is beautiful. And it didn't get in the way of those brand new countertops or the pendant lights that they spent six months picking out. And then you showed up with a 12 inch white pizza pan to put on the ceiling. Mm. They're far happier. <laughs> yeah, interior designers <laughs> love surprises, right? When you show up and stuff. Like, uh, those more aesthetic driven solutions. So that's that's one area that if, if you're still struggling to figure out how do we get a little bit more with less, let's have some dialogue and help help learn how to do that better. Uh, the second thing I, I think just about universal as as anything I can bring up is is the outdoor space. Um, I, just about any dealer that I talk to, I'll ask the question, how do you feel you guys are doing and getting dollars out of the backyard? And almost everybody says, ah, we could be doing a lot better there. That's it seems like sales guys get really interested in getting the indoors, getting the control systems figured out. And then when it comes to the backyard, it's usually let me pick a skew and drop one in. So that might be a pair of mariners on the back deck pointed out towards the neighbor's yard. Uh, it might be, hey, we're, we're getting pretty used to just drop in a patio series or a garden series because it's one skew to think about. Um, and I don't want to call anybody lazy because I know that you've all got tons of stuff on your plate and it's it's hard to stop and take more time with that. But I think that's where the design gallery app comes into play a bit is when you start showing some of those images of what's possible outside, it gets you out outside of your comfort zone a bit and you start going, okay, well, what is the right, where do I need a speaker for one, just to get coverage? And then two, what could that thing look like? Um, it might be a satellite and it's part of a system. 
It might be a wedge speaker that is going to blend in between a couple of defined endpoints uh, on a on an outdoor soffit or an eave. Mm -hmm. It could be an omnidirectional product. There's so many things in the catalog that allow you uh, to, to get creative in those spaces. But I think about the opportunity that's available outside and the size of that from a dollar perspective. To me, the only place that has anything close is if you're going to do a dedicated theater in the house. Like that's probably going to be your most expensive room, right? Especially right. if you're talking surround sound and projectors and seating treatments, things like that. Like that's probably going to be the biggest single room in the house. But once you get away from that theater system, the backyard is number two on that list. And I will tell you that there's a lot of folks out there that say, hey, I'm not interested in a theater. We don't have a space to dedicate just to watch movies, but almost everybody that you talk to has got a backyard that they spend some amount of time getting out there and, and uh, entertaining and hosting. And especially in the Northwest where we've got limited season, people oh. get really intentional about getting out as soon as that sun cracks. When it's on, it's on, right? Like the sun is out. I'm sorry, I'm calling in sick. Uh, I, have, I have one of 20 days of sunshine this, this year. I'm, I'm gonna be outside enjoying yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, and I think we, we also lose a little bit of perspective in our industry about how much things cost. Um, you know, some of that might be you know, selling with our own wallets to some degree. It's also just not realizing how much outdoor living costs in, in the world today. I mean, you, you want to go have a small pergola built and some stonework and a retaining wall. Like, that is not an inexpensive ask these days. I mean, I, I've got friends that were working on something for a pretty tight backyard. And the first bid that came back was one hundred twenty thousand dollars. I was gonna say that's a six there. figure. That's a six figure touch. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they, they've whittled it back and got it down to like the fifty to sixty thousand dollar range. Uh, but you know, you think about that. We're we're asking them to spend four grand on a you know a garden series system that's going to totally change the feel right. of that space. And if you're shy, thinking that no one's going to spend five grand with you outside, and you don't you don't realize how much people are willing to spend in those areas. Well, and it's true because they've, you know, just by virtue of the fact that they have a yard space, right? Especially with what real estate is like today, right? The fact that you're not in a condo that you, you know, you have a space and you have a yard to go with mm -hmm. it, right? Like people are really going to utilize that as, as much as they possibly can. And music is an easy way to do that. Now you want to talk about adding value, like, okay, yeah, retaining walls are great. Outdoor kitchens. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great too. But, you know, Having music in that space transforms the space, right. and, and it's true. And it's true inside, and it's true outside. But especially outside, where you know you're just out there, you're just chilling. You might spend the entire weekend outside, you know, and uh, it, it adds a lot of value to that space. And it there's, it, it, uh, there's an interesting kind of paradigm with outdoor audio. Um, this is I, I my education's in psychology, so I'm a nerd that thinks about how how people process information and think about stuff, but. Uh, you know, the, the the classic demo when you add a subwoofer to a system, people usually go, oh, yeah, that sounds a little bit better with the sub. But as soon as you turn it off and take it away, everybody goes, oh, yeah, I wish I would have had that subwoofer. If, if you go to an outdoor space and you tell somebody, uh, you know, hey, you should add music to it, they'll go, oh, yeah, that would be a little bit better. But if you have music on and then you take it away, like the party's over. Like right, when you shut right. the music off, that's when everybody gets in their car and goes home. And yeah. so- it's kind of an interesting effect to say once you have it, living without it is no longer an option. It's oh, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's an interesting perspective on that. Um, I wanted to make sure I asked this because we are we are running out a little bit of time here, but uh, we all have our favorite children. We all have our favorite babies out there, right? But when you look at the Sonance James lineup, are there some products, or do you have a specific favorite where you're like, you know what, this thing is just like the the it like this is the, the thing at sonance that i just like i'm like you know hell yeah that's 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 what this is all about yeah yeah maybe all since we're talking indoors and outdoors i'll, I'll give you one from each family uh oh that's a good there, there we go yeah that, that's a good way to spread the love around and, and there you not go. anybody mad at you <laughs> i'm uh i'm definitely a sucker for invisible speakers and th there's probably some on on the on the call today that maybe haven't listened to a pair or they haven't heard them for a couple of years and you're going oh my gosh this guy's an idiot which Maybe I could be an idiot. Uh, I, I am such a chump for invisible speakers. Since we redesigned our line uh, back in 2020, I, I honestly think it's, it is one of the best sounding loudspeakers that I've ever listened to. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's within context to say, 
it's from a distributed audio standpoint, if you're looking for a dedicated two channel experience where you're getting perfect imaging in between and you're going to sit in that one spot in the room, invisibles are not your toy. Like that's not what it's built for. No. Invisibles are built for distributed audio. And I don't, I don't even mean to say it's for background audio because I don't think that's a relevant statement anymore. Um, but our, our invisibles have such broad dispersion that no matter where you are in the room, you get the same acoustic experience 15 feet away from the speaker as you do directly under the speaker. And so uh, when you're talking about distributed audio where you are never sitting in between two speakers, you're always moving around, whether that's entertaining, cooking, board games, family night, whatever. Having a speaker with broad dispersion is really important. They also have incredibly good bass at low volumes, which is something that most speakers struggle to do. And mm -hmm. so when you think about distributed audio and the way that most people listen to it, it's it's not the way we do demos of music. Like when we do demos, we're like, yeah, listen to that thing go. But the reality <laughs> is most customers listen to them at 15 or 20% volume. And so to have a speaker that can still hold up and have really strong bass, even at those low volumes is a really impressive characteristic. So. Um, that's definitely the the sweetheart to to my uh, to my indoor line. You, you notice, sure. by the way, I didn't say that one of the reasons I love them is because they're invisible. <laughs> <laughs> that's just like a, that's to me. That's just the cherry on the top. Like that's I think true. it's a better sounding speaker than traditional uh, visible products. Mm -hmm. And then you throw in the icing on the cake. Is by the way, this thing gets mudded over, painted, plastered, wallpapered. Like how cool of a product to offer is that? Well, it, yeah, it, pretty... it's a great way too because you know one of the. the, the the invisibles are one of my favorites as well, just based on the, the demo that we saw at the studio where it's an entire, you know, surround sound system that there are no visible speakers anywhere in that room. And, uh, it sounds amazing. You know, that the, uh, the, the bombing scene and all that stuff, it, it really just sounds great. And there's no visible clue that right. there's speakers in there. Um, you know, and, and because they're invisible, you can have more real estate, right? Like a client isn't going to put up with a gigantic speaker with a grill and a frame and everything else around it. Whereas, Hey man, if this thing is mudded over and invisible, like <laughs> that's yeah. big, it could be as big as you need it to be, and um, sure. you know, and sound better and provide that dispersion that you talked about. Um, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I want to hear oh, all about no. your, your your second favorite child. Um, yeah. <laughs> second favorite child. Yeah, from an outdoor perspective, I mean, landscape audio obviously is just like the the topic in general is is life changing. When you start to understand what great coverage in a backyard feels like, it's so different. I'm going to take you a whole different direction, though, and give you a product that I think is a really fun one that is a little bit more uh, visible. It's meant to be seen, and it's a two-channel product, but it's built for outdoors, and that's the James Outdoor Tower product. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a couple different models within that family, but the sweetheart for me is called an OT84, so Outdoor Tower. Uh, it's got dual 8-inch woofers. It's got a... a, a concentric mid-tweet on the, on the mid-range uh, driver. Um, it sounds fantastic. You can buy amp it, which is my favorite uh, way to do that. Being an old car audio guy means I need more bass all the time, right? So you buy amp that speaker means you get a little bit more juice out of those woofers. And that is a product that can play incredibly loud, has super high output if you need it to. It sounds great by a fire pit or by a little uh, patio table with a, a pergola built over it. You can do them in any color that you want. We've got 10 standard colors in the fold. Um, I did a set for my myself. I actually paid dollars and, and bought a pair for myself. I liked them so much. Uh, I did it in a color called Military Blue. It's been known as the Sonyance Blue color. Uh, and as I've taken those around to some different events, uh, they they tend to get a lot of fanfare. So um, there's a lot of fun stuff in that in that uh, outdoor category in general. But if you haven't had a chance to listen to those outdoor towers, um, reach out to to Jason, connect with me, and let's let's figure out how to get you a, a few minutes to listen on them because they're a pretty fun product. They they truly are. I mean, they they really are an audiophile grade product that are made for outdoors. And and you know, with um, if you put thirty two of these things around your yard, you get nice even coverage, right? Like that's <laughs> that's what we're talking about here. No. I was really excited to get that PO, by the way. <laughs> But we'd be very excited if you wanted to put uh, 32 of those around. Your they sound fantastic. Um, you know, I, I have, it's, you know, it, they're, they're big to drag around, but man, you got to sit on a demo for these things. They sound so great. Yeah. <laughs> really. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, Scott, it's, it's been, it's been wonderful talking to you. Um, you, uh, we're, we're going to put you on the spot one more time. And you, know, you talked about your two favorite children from, from Sonance. Do you have a, Favorite product in our space that isn't 
Sonance. Is there a certain, you know, is there a certain piece of technology that you just love that doesn't have anything to do with, you know, well, your, your I, I thought you were going, what's your favorite child uh, of your own? <laughs> I, uh, her name is Penelope. The pup. Oh, that's true. She's four legs and has a tail. There you go. Uh, man, favorite product outside of Sonance James. Um, something you're excited about new direction of technology something like that yeah so i'll throw this one out here and this is um if you're at cd last year you probably felt this to some degree but um direct view led video walls are definitely making their way into our world uh, mm. they're, they're not new like we've had video walls for a while but this idea of i've got i've got a you know, a, a beautiful home and I've got this whole wall of windows, projections really going to be a tough sell because the amount of light that's in a space, how do I do this, you know, with full brightness um, and I want a big screen, like did sure. direct views becoming the next kind of cutting edge, I think of what's coming out there. I think for several years at Cedia, um, or, you know, obviously our friends at Sony were, were, you know, really pushing what's possible with the CL, the CLED and, um, probably one of the best looking panels I've ever seen that Sony has built out. But at CD last year, I think there were another three, four manufacturers in the space. So sure. it just goes to show that wh whether they're ready for prime time or if it's still we're, we're getting there, it means that there's a movement happening. And so the, you know, a lot, a lot of the homes that I get to walk these days were, we're very fortunate to have a lot of clients that have a decent chunk of money in their pockets to spend. You know, I can't tell you how many houses they're they're dealing with huge wall of windows and open concept space. They've got views of the mountains or of the oceans, sure. and I don't want to go hide in my basement to go have a cool video experience. And so, this idea of really good video coming from uh, from direct view walls is, is pretty interesting. I can give you a little, maybe a little bit of a teaser that there are some things that we're working on at Sonyans to say. You know, with a perforated <laughs> screen in a projector, I can hide speakers behind that wall. But how do I do something like that when it comes to direct view? Because now I can't use that real estate. So um, we're already kind of sniffing around that that market and saying some somebody's got to figure out a way to provide some really incredible audio. So certainly, uh, without selling myself out here, just know that uh, there's there's some cool things oh, that man. you're looking towards. If anybody can do it, uh, it's, you know, the, the engineering brain trust uh, that you guys have, because uh, right. uh, as far as being the thought leaders and certainly the product innovators in the category, and that's, I mean, I don't think that's really up for debate. I mean, everybody else is really kind of chase, you know, what, what Sonance and what James have done uh, mm -hmm. in the industry. They set the bar and we start to see, uh, you know, some of the competitors out there go, oh, we, we could probably try and do that too. Mm -hmm. So um, again, that's, that's not hyperbole. That's, you know, that's, that's fact as far as I'm concerned anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, again, really, really cool to think about what, uh, you know, what you guys have, you know, up your sleeves for the, for the next generation. Yeah, yeah. That is certainly an exciting tidbit because that is always a challenge with those giant video walls is, is how do you, how do you get some sound out of it? If you want to use it as a theater, what are you going to do? It's, it's a, it's a non perforated entirely, you know, mm -hmm. solid wall. And, and what do you do? But I, I agree with you. I think, um, you know, if I really had to put a, a, a you know, a, a, a finger on that, I would say that that's probably, what I'm looking forward to most as well is these giant, large, configurable screens where they can go anywhere. Brightness isn't a factor. You know, you don't have to worry about projection or, or anything else. And uh, they're they're configurable. Wrap around walls, do do whatever you want. That stuff is is really starting to hit an exciting point. And uh, I'm yeah. happy to hear that Sonance is uh, is is on top of this as far as the sound form goes. Because man, with, without great sound, a video is almost useless. You know, no surprises there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So yeah, we're uh, we're we, yeah, we're right. Man, that went fast. Uh, <laughs> we are, uh, and uh, I yeah, I, I hope it went fast. It went fast for me. Hopefully, you know, our our audience probably is is uh, you know driving off the road right now. But <laughs> no, <come on. laughs> we're uh, we're we're super stoked to have you as always, Scott. It's uh, it's it's great. Uh, proud to call you a friend, and uh, really, thanks again for for coming on with us and, uh, and and taking time, man. I know you're busy. It's good, man. Glad to do it. All right, we're. Uh, for Jason, my name is Chris, and uh, this is Inside Integration, and we will uh, we'll see you when we see you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah.